This is the platform. Andy Lee with us out of Manchester. Joe Joyce versus Joe Parker happening on Sunday. And Joe has been training with Andy Lee, who also, of course, trains the world champion, Tyson Fury. Andy, Joe has always come across as a really good guy. In fact, perhaps at times too much of a nice guy. You've acknowledged this as well, and you've got kind of a plan around that for this fight. Yeah, he definitely needs to be more spiteful. But I've seen that in training, um, especially for this camp. I think he's a bit uh, peeved. He's a bit upset by people under, underestimating him. And everyone's picking Joyce to win the fight. They think he's got nothing to do with coming and steamroll Joseph Parker. And I think that's got Joe's back up a bit. And uh, yeah, he wants to prove them all wrong. So how good he is. Is that just a bit of pre-fight chat or is there a realistic expectation amongst fight fans in England that that's going to happen? Everyone's picking Joyce over here. And I can see where they're coming from. He's he, You know, so far he hasn't faltered in his career. He steamrolled everybody. He comes forward. He's a big man, really big man. And he throws a lot of punches, takes a good punch. But he's never faced anyone as good as Joseph Parker. And how we've been working, we've got a very specific plan to be Joyce. And it's up to Joseph now to execute the plan, uh, to stay calm emotionally, to stay focused and concentrated, and uh, just do do what he has to do. Nothing special, just do what he does every day, what he's been doing every day in the gym for this training camp. Andy Lee is with us out of Manchester ahead of Parker versus Joyce. And you've made no secret about that plan, have you? That you don't want him to go toe-to-toe. You want him to keep his distance, be technical, score the punches. Yeah, but also hurt Joyce and not back up, not run away from him. Um, Joyce is a guy who likes to have you there at the end of his punches. He doesn't like to have... Joyce is very, he's a big man, but he's uncoordinated. He can't punch and move his feet at the same time. He's got to have you in the one spot. He's got so he likes to get his opponents on the ropes. When he gets them there, then he unloads. And so Parker's job is to take the distance slow, little small steps without running, punch Joyce, um, get out clean, exit low, and not have his back throws. When his back hits the ropes, there's three or four things he can do: is either punch with Joyce, and then tie up, move off, faint in, or or, or evade him, paint him and evade him. Um, he, he, Joseph's well, well drilled, well drilled, and um, he's done it so many, many times in the, in the gym. <clears throat> so he, he knows what he has to do. Hopefully, it's become instinctual to him now. And uh, yeah, it's a, it, as I said, it's a hard fight. Joyce is a big man, and you know, if he could, if he never, he never had a throw punch, just a sheer size of him would make him a hard task for anybody. But Parker's got all the tools. He's got all the experience. He's the younger man. And he's more determined than ever. I can see it. Neat, like a, as I said, he's a bit peeved. He's, um, can't figure out why people are not. don't think he's going to win the fight. And he's going to, I think it's giving him a bit more emphasis to, to uh, put on a good performance. Andy Lee is with us on the platform. Just saying, describe to us how big this guy Joyce is. It sounds like he's Goliath. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I don't know. He's about he's about six seven, I think. Um, but I'm not, he weighs around two forty five. Parker weighs two fifty, um, so Parker might have a little weight advantage on him. But he, he's just a big, tall man. And Joe's about six four, um, so he's not too far off your average man. You know, your tall man. But Joe's he's big, um, and he takes a good punch, but. I wonder, he's never been punched by, by anybody like Joseph before. He's fought good fighters, but guys who've been past their best, maybe slightly on the slide. And he's been well managed in terms of the matchmaking. This is his real test against a world class fighter like Joseph. What have you learned since you came on board with Joseph last year and you helped him to those wins over Chisora? What have you what have you what have you learned about Joseph and what have you learned about how much you can get him to improve? Um listen, to be honest with you, I don't know where Joseph's ceiling is in terms of how far he can go because he's only just tapping into it now. And 
we saw uh, whatever about the first reserve fight. We were only together six weeks. It wasn't long, long enough to impact any change. The second fight, I think everyone would recognise there was there was some quite some good improvements, and he just looked exciting again. He was an exciting fighter to watch because after he won the title, he lost to he lost to Joshua, and he lost to White. Then he kind of plateaued, and <clears throat> yeah, he boxed in the win, but it was never exciting, never really exciting to watch. Now he's punching hard. He's boxing smart. And Joseph has just has the type of coordination, <clears throat> uh, foot speed and hand speed, and also the intelligence. He, Joseph can fight, could, could potentially fight like a middleweight in a heavyweight body. He's got that much skill and talent. And it's just about tap, making him believe in it, tapping into it, rehearsing it to where it becomes, you know, rehearsing it so much in repetition that it becomes just who he is as a fighter. Andy Lee is with us ahead of this very exciting fight we're looking forward to. That's Joe Parker and Joe Joyce, Sunday, New Zealand time. Um, he's won six in a row as Joseph, but the last four going the distance. And when I say but, I, I don't mean that as a criticism, but at the same time, it's lingering and it's annoying that he hasn't been able to put these opponents down. Do you feel the same way, Andy? Well, he had Chisora down in the last fight three times, I think. Um, but since then, we've seen how good Chisora is. He just went and beat Kubrat Pulev, who's a top-rated heavy, like Bulgarian heavyweight. So Chisora, like that, that makes Joseph's wins over Chisora look so much more better. You know, people think Chisora's finished because he's been around so long, but he shows you what he can do when he beats Pulev. And well, like when you're at the top, top level, it's hard to, like, the elite fighters, you don't really see a lot of knockouts when it's elite versus elite fighters. But Joe's improving in his punching power. And punching, knocking somebody out is not all about just punching hard. Um, knocking somebody out is about setting a knock up, knock, knockout up. It's about setting a pattern and fainting them and Short, hitting them with the punches you don't see. And all of those little tricks that I learned from Tony Manuel Stewart from what I've been shown, like teaching Joseph slowly, slowly. But you have to take it one step at a time. You know, building blocks, building blocks, building blocks. So Joe's coming. First, you must learn the, learn the basics of anything, and then you learn the essence of it. And Joseph's just coming to that phase now where he's past the basics, and he's just. The next fight, this fight goes well. The next fight, the next fight, you'll start to see the re- the better Joseph. You sound as though you've got a lot of confidence in him, and that must be you know he must he must pick that up off you as well. Just the change in him that you've noticed being involved in your camp and with Tyson being around and and giving him advice and all of that kind of stuff. It must be really uplifting. Yeah, you can't help but improve in this environment, and. You know, everybody in the gym is top, top level fighters. And as much as I can tell Joe, you learn more from your examples. We all grow up learning, watching our parents. That's that's how we, you know, every son acts like his dad when he grows up and daughter acts like, you learn from your examples. It's the same in boxing. And when Joe's watching all of these things, and if I can't tell Joe something, I can't communicate to him, I can display it to him. And I can show I can show him fights where I've had him on stars, and I can say, "Look, Joe, this is what I'm talking about." So Joe, Joe's improved mentally. Just having Tyson there, the guidance, the not, not just watching him train because he trained Tyson trains like an animal, and it shows Joseph what he needs to do to get to that, get to there, get to be like Tyson. Also, when we talk, we're at, we're having meals together, we're you know we're, we're running together. And all the time it's programming Joe's mind to get to be that champion, to be, you know, just having that mentality, that champion's mentality. And that's what separates, you know, the one who believes he's going to win will win. The one who has any doubts, usually, they, don't, they come up short. So boxing's all in the mind. When it comes to the fight, it's all what's going on in between the years. Andy Lee is with us. That's fascinating. I could sit here and talk to you all day, man. I know that you're very busy, so I've only got a couple more questions. <laughs> but... right. I'm just passionate. I'm very passionate about this fight and about Joseph. And listen, we know we're in for a very hard fight. It's going to be, could be ugly, could be a hard fight. But if Joseph comes through, I really think that it will listen, lift him to a new level. 
And yeah, I don't think it'll be. Maybe it's not Joseph's best win of his career, but it will be. It will be a new level for Joe. I do. I do think it'll be a new level for him. I just want to. See, I, I I care about him per, very much, and I just want to see him. Like I know what's in him. I know. I just want to see him bring it out of himself and, and do it on the night. You can tell by listening to you how much you care as is, is, is well, Andy. I mean, this this game is your life, isn't it? Fight game. Yeah, listen, I I was brought up in boxing, boxing from a young age, and my old brothers both box, and my, my dad would take them to the gym. This was in London, England. Um, and I would go along and watch and watch and watch, and then finally got a chance to box myself. Moved back to Ireland, and we were boxing there. Eventually... I, I won a world medal, I won a European medal, I went to the Olympics, turned pro, went to Detroit, trained in the Conk Gym, and won a, won a world title under Adam Bill. Boxing's been my life, and it's given me a great life. I now work as a coach with Joseph, with Tyson, with Paddy Donovan, and also as a commentator. So it's, it's, it's you know, even though I've retired as a boxer, I'm more involved now than I, have, than I ever was. And, um, yeah, it's... Boxing has given me a lot more than I ever gave it in terms of all the sacrifice, but it's repaid me a lot. It's repaid me more, more tenfold. Is it one of those things that when it's in your blood, when you love it like this, you just, you're just you always going to be in or, or, or around it in some kind of capacity? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, listen, I never thought when I retired that I'd be back in the game like this. Um, but and, and there is a price to pay because I have a young family at home and you know your energy and time and energy is the most valuable thing you have in life and where you spend it you know it's it's the, it's, it's the most valuable thing we have and you know if I'm in the gym and with, with the boys and we're training and we're preparing for fights it's time away from the family time away from my wife and children so there is a price to pay for everything but um, they know I love it but but like they see the passion and they see what you know how I am and I'm doing and how much how happy it makes me so I think overall even though it's tough for my wife to be home with the three kids by herself they're happy she's happy for me to do it Andy Lee is with us Joshua Parker versus Joe Joyce this coming Sunday you're on the platform listening to this and and I tell you what Andy after you know we speak to a lot of trainers we speak to a lot of promoters you're one of the very first people that I've ever spoken to who is just so quietly and calmly dissecting the upcoming fight uh, talking about what you've done talking about the training without a lot of hype and I think that here in New Zealand as New Zealanders, we kind of, I think people are going to really appreciate this, that you're not trying to talk anything up. The way you have talked is actually really kind of matter of fact almost. It's it's almost distant, you know, but you're able to see what's in front of you and able to just explain that. So, yeah, it's, it's just really illuminating listening to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. Because, listen, we, we've got nothing to hide. You know, we did a public workout today in front of all the media here and you know, a lot of these, a lot of times with these public workouts, people go in. They might just do a skipping, or they might just do uh, some shadow boxing, but not really show. We we came in here. We took, we sat down. We wrapped Joseph's hands like we would for a fight, and we did a full-on training session in the ring, and we showed it like so. Like we got nothing to hide, and and like yeah, it, it's. <clears throat> We're honest people. Joe's honest man. He's here to win the fight. He's trained extremely hard, and I've trained him extremely hard. And now it's just in his hands. It's in, it's, 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 it's in his hands and it's in his mind. He has to go out there and do it. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a tough one. I, when I box myself, I used to love that responsibility. You know, you got all these people supporting you and with you in the circle, and. They're all there to help you. But when it comes to when the bell rings, you're the one in there. You're the only one who can do it. But as a coach, you realize that one, you have you have so much control over all of, every aspect of Joseph's training and his life when we're in the camp and we're training. But then when that bell goes, I just got to let go of the control and trust in him and hope. And, and I do trust in him that he'll go out and perform and do justice to the work we've done. 
Well, you're obviously a man that instills confidence in other men, which is, you know, I mean, this is going to be so cool to watch on Sunday. The other final thing is, of course, it's in Manchester. I know that there's other sport there with the round ball, the football. They love their football there. So what kind of hype is that? What kind of thing is building up about this? Yeah, there's been a great buzz in the city. And this is Joe's fourth fight, fourth fight in Manchester. But also, he, this is his third fight in a row. He fought the two Chisora fights here in Manchester. Um, so, and we train in Morecambe, which is only an hour away. So, like, Joe's like the local boy. Um, Joyce is down in London. He's a southerner. I've taken to Joe here, you know, and um, everywhere we go on the streets, people are listening well, hoping he wins the fight. And, you know, back in Ireland, where I'm from, we're all saying the prayers and lighting the candles. So, <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got a lot of spirit with us. <laughs> All the very best to you. Thank you so much for giving us so much of your time, Andy. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you too. Talk to you again.